Hello and welcome to your Michigan Compass. Today we're in Portage, Michigan at the Air Zoo. And no, that is not a zoo in the sky. What it actually is, is a museum full of aviation wonders, planes, spaceships, and all kinds of aeronautical things. We're gonna take a look inside, gonna visit some of these unique planes and see the cockpits, see what makes them work, and see what made them a part of history. So let's take a step inside the air zoo. All right, well, this first plane is a Waco VPF-7. Only six of these were ever built, and they were built back around 1937. Originally, this plane would have been part of the Guatemalan Air Force, and it would have had two 30 caliber machine guns mounted under the wings. This next plane is the Ford Trimotor. It was a joint venture between Ford Motor Company and Stout Metal Airplane Company. The Ford Trimotor went into production in 1925. The plane was built entirely out of corrugated aluminum, which made it much stronger and much more rugged. Although the plane was originally designed for passenger use, it was easily adapted for cargo use by removing the seats inside. The Air Zoo also has some very themed rides, the first of which is this balloon ride, which is open to both kids and adults alike. There's an airplane ride as well. Unfortunately, that wasn't working the day that we were there. There's also this Ferris wheel ride, which will accommodate one adult and two kids. All of the rides are included in the cost of admission. Lastly, they have a mini drop tower, which is perfect for smaller kids. This Curtis Robin was built around 1928 by the Curtis Robertson Airplane Manufacturing Company. The plane could hold three people, one pilot with two passengers behind the pilot. A modified version of the Robin was used by the United States Army Air Corps and designated the XC-10. The S-7 was built by a French aircraft manufacturer called SPAD. Over 6,000 were built from 1917 to 1921, and it was used during the First World War by the Royal Flying Corps. The Sopwith Camel is a British-built airplane also used in World War I. This particular model has no covering on its wings, and you can see the intricate details of its architecture. Notice how each cross member has holes cut into it. That is done to make the aircraft lighter without sacrificing strength. One of the most iconic planes in history is the B-25 Bomber, introduced in 1941 and used throughout World War II. It featured 18 50 caliber Browning machine guns and included a rotating gun turret in the top midsection. While there were many versions of the B-25 made throughout history, the B-25J, this model, makes up for the majority of B-25s built. The Air Zoo also features a lot of hands-on learning experiments for kids. In this model, we see how a crank is used to create compressed air which launches a vehicle. This is very similar to the catapult launch on an aircraft carrier that launches planes. The Bell P-39 Air Cobra was designed by Bell Aircraft and used during World War II. It was one of the first aircrafts to have the engine installed behind the pilot with a shaft driving the propeller. It was also the first airplane designed with a tricycle style undercarriage in order to accommodate the engine weight in the middle of the plane. The twin engine Bell Sea Cobra was first designed in the mid 1960s and used during the Vietnam War. This attack helicopter was capable of carrying missiles and guns. The Bell Sea Cobra is still in service today.
one of the most easily recognizable planes in existence is the F-14 Tomcat. Built by Grumman in the early 1970s, this plane was made famous in the movie Top Gun, where Tom Cruise played Maverick and flew this plane. Over the years, the F-14 helped the United States maintain its air superiority up until 2006 when the F-14 Tomcat was retired. The Vought F-8J Crusader was one of the predecessors to the F-14 Tomcat. It was used during the Vietnam War. The F-8 Crusader was a photo reconnaissance plane and played an important role in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Possibly one of the most incredible aircrafts ever built is the SR-71 Blackbird. This one plane is worth the price of admission to the air zoo alone. And on this recent trip, the cockpit was open for the first time since the SR-71 has been on display at the air zoo. The SR-71 Blackbird is a reconnaissance spy plane built by Lockheed Martin in the late 1960s at a cost of $34 million each. Though many countries have tried to shoot it down while flying overhead, None have even hit it. The reason for this is simple. It can outrun any missile or bullet. The SR-71 Blackbird top speed is Mach 3.2, which is about 2,432 miles per hour. Its sleek design made it extremely hard for radar to pick up. The model here at the Air Zoo is the SR-71B which is the training version of this plane. This cockpit seats two, with the rear seat being higher for the instructor to view the pilot. Pilots flying the SR-71 Blackbird were required to wear astronaut-type outfits because of the G-force involved in Mach 3.2 speeds, as well as the extreme altitude that this plane could reach. The SR-71 could fly at an altitude of 80,000 feet which is equivalent to almost 16 miles. Its speed at Mach 3.2 would allow the plane to fly from New York to London in under two hours. Though it was retired in 1998, it is still the fastest plane ever built. Over to the right, we have an F-18 Hornet. F-18 was built by McDonnell Douglas, which is now part of Boeing, in the mid-70s. Over to the left, we have a Douglas A-4D Skyhawk. The Skyhawk played a key role in the Vietnam War, as well as a few others, and it was built in the mid-50s. And the excellent theming in the Air Zoo continues. Here we have the control tower from an aircraft carrier. The floor is painted to look like the deck of the aircraft carrier. The back wall is lined with several motion simulators where you can experience what it would be like to fly in one of these planes. There are so many planes here at the Air Zoo that it's easy to miss some, including the one above and the Wright Brothers plane that's flying in the background. This is the P-47 Thunderbolt, built by Republic Aviation in the early 40s. It was used during the D-Day operation. Right through this doorway, we'll enter the second building of the Air Zoo. And if we go to the left, we'll see the space exhibit. And to the right, they have a D-Day exhibit. Let's take a look at the space exhibit. Robert Goddard was an American engineer who launched the first liquid-fueled rocket way back in 1926. He is credited with ushering in an era of space flight. Our journey to the stars began long ago when Galileo became one of our first astronomers back in the 17th century. The Mayans were among the first to use the sun and stars to create a calendar. This is one of the first consoles from Mission Control where they would monitor what was going on with the rockets before, during, and after takeoff. This is the Mercury Redstone Launch Vehicle. 
And if you look towards the top, you'll see a little black point at the top. That is actually this capsule sitting next to the model. This is one spaceship that doesn't have a lot of legroom. And if that last one wasn't small enough for you, imagine being in space in this Gemini crew capsule for two people. Starting with 164 feet tall, we have some size comparisons between various rockets. 113 feet. Here's one we're all familiar with, the Space Shuttle, 185 feet tall. 177 feet tall and lastly 151 feet tall well if you've ever wondered if you could shower in space the answer is yes it is a bit complicated though and it involves a vacuum hose Using the bathroom is a very similar process, also involving a vacuum. Crew quarters on the space station are very small and resemble a Japanese capsule hotel. This model is so realistic you can almost hear the countdown. This is an actual spacesuit used aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. Here we have some information on the Saturn V rocket. I'll show you a little bit about it. The most impressive thing in this room is the small scale model of what the rocket actually looked like and how big it is. There's the U and part of the S. If you look over here, you can see approximately how big that is. It's about the equivalent of launching a building into space. Saga of Ham, Trailblazer in Space, is the story of a three-year-old chimpanzee serving the cause of science. The little chimp has been carefully selected, thoroughly examined, and patiently tutored to help mankind discover whether living creatures can survive travel in space. The chimp earns a banana-flavored pellet as a reward. After each test and each capsule, there is a sip of water to top off the tasty prize. Ham is but one of several chimps to undergo pre-flight training. Each is oxygen from head to toe with his own spacesuit as he awaits the big day. A special chamber has been built for the little passenger, similar in detail to the capsule that will eventually transport man into space. Seven miles of wiring and 10,000 parts are shaped and stacked layer on layer in an area smaller than a telephone. And just as you saw in the video a few moments ago, this is the capsule that the chimpanzee would have used to ride into space. There's a brand new exhibit about to open called Alien Worlds and Androids. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite open when we were there. I really missed out on this one. It's going to feature some famous movie robots, including C-3PO, R2-D2, and BB-8. As well as the Terminator, and Iron Man. 
The Air Zoo is a great place for both kids and adults. There's so much to see, to do, and tons to learn. I recommend investing in the Family Pass as you can bring your entire family and it is good for one year. You can also visit other participating museums inside a 90 mile radius for a discounted price or other participating museums outside that 90 mile radius for free. At the time of this posting on April 3rd of 2020, the Air Zoo Museum is currently closed due to the coronavirus. In response to this closure, the Air Zoo put up a new web page called Launchpad to Learning. The page features videos with science experiments, stories, and some great history lessons on some of the amazing airplanes and spaceships that are there. Simply visit airzoo.org and click on Launchpad to Learning. Hey guys, unfortunately, the end that I shot for my video is a bit out of date right now with the current situation that's going on. So I just wanted to say thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to click on that compass to subscribe to future videos. We'll see you next time. And I can't really say the usual tagline. Instead, we're gonna say, don't forget, adventure is just a few weeks away.